Ja, moin und willkommen zurück. All departments reporting full mission readiness. We've got our full complement on board. This is my favorite moment right now. The start of a new mission is always full of possibility. The Orion Syndicate could sell it as a drug. <laughs> Don't let the Admiralty hear you say that. Heute wollen wir hoffentlich endlich mal das Schiff starten. Captain on the bridge. Sit. Sit, everyone. You all know, I'm not big on speeches. We're embarking on the first mission since our refit. Let's make it a good one. Disengage docking clamps. Docking clamps released. Thrusters ahead, Mr. Hendar. Gibt's. Hey, that should do it. It's out of course for the Hotari system. Prepare to go to war paint. Aye, Captain. You know what? You take this one. Me? Engage. Really, I, uh, you don't look so good. I have to get to sick bay. Go. So viel dazu, dass es kein Problem ist, dass wir abhängig sind. Well, that was quite a scare. A few minutes more and it would have been one of the shortest tenures on record for a first officer. Is that the engineer that was out on the hull? That storm did a real number on him, but... He'll live. Just needs rest. You should worry about yourself. Your deridium levels got dangerously low and destabilized your cell structure. This is definitely one of the more memorable first days I can think of. My name is Dr. Aram Duval, Chief Medical Officer. To be honest, I've never met a Kobliad before. You're rare, I know. I was going to say special. Your people's numbers have dwindled, despite the Federation's efforts to find a more readily available alternative to the Deridium you need to survive. Yet you joined Starfleet, and managed to thrive. I imagine the responsibility must be overwhelming. Maybe even a burden at times. <laughs> it does make me unique, but it's not a burden at all. I'm honored to be Kobliad, to represent my people. As you should be. And don't worry, I won't treat you like a science experiment. I just do the science and leave the experiments to Solano. You don't agree with his methods? I don't agree with his definition of acceptable risks. Not when the lives of your crew are at stake. My professional opinion is that the accident took a toll. More than he's willing to admit. 
He's overstressed, operating in the pressure cooker of his own mind, which is never a good headspace when the lives of your crew are at stake. What concerns me is that now he's even further away from the thing he's been chasing his entire career. Breakthrough discovery. The major innovation. Something he can put his name on. The more the time passes and the further out of reach it gets, the more risk he'll be willing. I think after what happened, Captain Solano's learned his lesson. And whatever ambition he once had is on hold for a while. He may say that, but we'll see what happens. And I have to give you credit for what happened on the bridge. It took guts to defy a direct order. Huh. I guess word travels fast around here. It's a small ship. And everyone's curious about the new XO. Fortunately, your cell structure is almost completely stabilized. And I'll spare us both the lecture, but I do feel it's my responsibility to remind you, without regular infusions of deridium, you will not live. It's as simple as that. Understood. Then, my work here is done. Lieutenant Bedrosian. I came to see if you were okay. We were all pretty worried on the bridge. No one knew what was happening. I'm feeling much better. Thank you. It's just part of who I am. You don't have to explain to me. I understand. I'm just glad you're okay. You trusted me earlier with the shields, and I appreciated that. I want you to know that I have your back. Thank you. Now, Carter, the emissions that gave you that burn are quite unusual, like everything else that goes with this storm. That's a combination of hyronolin and lectrazine to counter the radiation effects. That should help speed your healing. She's come by a couple of times to see you already. Be brief. It's good to see you awake again. I was starting to get worried. Not that you aren't in good hands with Dr. Duvall. You did take one hell of a shot, though. Ah, come on. You know you can't get rid of me that easy. Don't push me, Diaz. You do not want to see me try. No, nope. <laughs> I am not getting on your bad side. I am a formidable enemy. <laughs> Millie was looking in on you, too, by the way. But since it's just us right now, I... I had a chance to think about this while I was away. And I thought it was important that I just come out and tell you. Instead of tiptoeing around it. Or worse. <laughs> it's okay, okay, Miranda. You can tell me anything. I know that. Then come on. Just spit it out. <laughs> I'm trying. Let me talk. What I'm trying to say is... We've been really good friends for a long time. But I got back here and I couldn't ignore it anymore. I want to see if there's more between us than just being friends. Mm. Ah, come. You don't have to explain it. I feel the same way. There is something between us. So, do you want to find out what that something is? If it's there for you, and it's there for me, why not give it a try? We don't have to put too much pressure on it. Let's just see where this goes. I like that. Definitely felt some pressure coming down to see you. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, the patient needs to rest. If he wants to get back to his old self. Of course. I'll see you again soon. Approaching the rendezvous point outside Atari space. Helm, bring us out of warp. Dropping to impulse. Ionic interference surging, Captain. Shield integrity holding. We can take it. 
We are at the correct coordinates to meet the shuttle. Commander Rydeck, find us our diplomat, if you will. Aye, Captain. Let's reduce the noise. Filter out environmental signals. I can manually tune what's left for Federation signal types. I've located the shuttle. Opening comms. On screen. Shuttle to Resolute. Shuttle to Resolute. Debris field. Lost maneuvering. Losing. I can't get it any clearer. We won't get a transporter lock. It's just not happening. Power up the tractor beam. We'll pull them directly into the docking bay. Diaz, you good to run the tractor emitter? Yes, sir. Uh, you sure? I'm sure. Come on, Diaz. First thing, lock onto the shuttle and stabilize the rotation. Aussteuerung. <lacht> so. That's gonna take out the shuttle. Dias the bridge. There's a large piece of debris headed for the shuttle. The tractor beam can't handle it. Can our shields take it? I believe so. Commander Ryder, plot an intercept course. On it. Here we go. Maneuvering thrusters bearing 53 Mark 17. 200 meters on an intercept course. Maneuvering. Gucken wir mal, wer da rauskommt, wa? on board. Good job. We're on our way down to meet them. Terra firma, so to speak. Ambassador Spock? Captain, we'll be right down to meet you, sir. In that case, I will wait for him here. Wow. Well, let me be the first to say, welcome to the Resolute, Ambassador. Thank you, Petty Officer... Carter? Carter Diaz, sir. I am pleased to meet you, Petty Officer Carter Diaz. 
It appears I have you to thank for my safe arrival. Your assistance arrived not a moment too soon, if I may say so. All in a day's work, Ambassador. This is what I'm here for. Quite dutifully. We thought we were prepared for our arrival in Hotari's space. But it is evident my craft was not sufficiently robust for such intense ionic activity. The storm has been pretty intense. There was an element that was most unusual. Before you came to our aid, our maneuvering thrusters and impulse engines were rendered inoperable. So we attempted a short traversal at warp speed, only to find that we could not achieve warp at all. Even though our diagnostics computer showed no faults or anomalies. What do you make of that? When all indications say that warp speed is possible, but in practice, we find it is not. Well, this storm is one of the strangest phenomena we've ever encountered. It's disrupted other systems. Who knows what it might do to a warp drive? Yes, it would seem further investigation is called for. Take readings, run some additional diagnostic checks, and we'll get to the bottom of this. Quite logical, Petty Officer Diaz. Thank you. Ambassador Spock. Excuse me. I'm honored to have you aboard. I'd like to get right to it. We're already behind. Ambassador Spock, my senior staff. It's not every day that a captain gets to welcome a Starfleet legend aboard. Hmm. You flatter me, Captain Solano. But legend implies the past tense, whereas I am very much focused on our present circumstances. I didn't mean to suggest you were stuck in the past. You're right, Ambassador. Not the most diplomatic choice of words. Your experience comes from the past. But our present situation calls for it. True enough. We were hoping you could fill us in on the details. We got the basics from Starfleet. Two formerly peaceful neighbors are now on the brink of war. Indeed. And the tension between them grows fiercer by the hour. Olivia and Hotari. The Olivians are the more advanced species. They made first contact with the Hotari over a century ago. This is Tau, the Hotari moon. It is rich in dilithium, and for decades, the Hotari and the Olivians have shared a mining operation there. The Olivians provide the technological resources, while the Hotari have served as the labor force. The stability of that arrangement was the source of their peace until recently. The Hotari have suddenly and forcefully seized control of the mining operations and expelled the Olydians from their system. That is the official story as told by the Hotari when they requested Federation mediation. But the details remain scant. Communications between all parties have been limited by the ionic interference. What are the Hotari defensive capabilities? Do they stand a chance to hold on to the mines now that they've taken them? It is unlikely the relatively primitive Hotari forces would prevail against the Olydian fleet in open war. But it would have been equally unlikely to predict they could take possession of the mines until they did just that. Which leaves many unanswered questions. Left unchecked. This conflict will result in more bloodshed, which is what we are here to prevent. And the dilithium trade hangs in the balance. Clearly the Hotari have been exploited in this relationship. Maybe we can persuade them peace is the more profitable alternative for everyone. They both profited from the mines. 
And for the Hatari, something is better than nothing. Peace is our objective, after all. That is correct. If we could convince them, it would restore the peace. But we would need the Hatari to accept a difficult compromise. Made all the more difficult by the emotions flaring on both sides, no doubt. Neither the Illidians or the Hotari are members of the Federation, so we can't make them do anything. There is an additional complicating factor I should mention. In the past, the Federation has relied on the Illidians as a source of dilithium. That certainly changes things. The Federation sources its dilithium from a lot of places. Yeah, and this is one of them. So we've already played a part in this. Unfortunately, that is indeed the case, Commander Rydek. We're morally obligated to make this right. Hold on. Our only obligation is to negotiate the peaceful resolution of this conflict. Given the Federation's involvement in the Illidium dilithium trade, Captain Solano and I must make every effort to appear neutral in these negotiations. What worries me is if this whole thing unravels and we're at the mercy of the storm at less than full strength. We can't let it come to that. Considering what the Ion Storm has done to our ship and the Ambassador's shuttle, we have to assume the Elidian fleet has had problems with it as well. This recent surge in the energy disturbance temporarily levels the playing field. Commander Westbrook is correct. The energy anomalies around the Hotari systems have been noted in the past. If it's keeping the two sides talking instead of shooting at each other, that actually helps us negotiate a peace. And we'll take advantage of that as long as it works in our favor. And when it doesn't? All the more reason to learn as much about it as we can while we are here. We do not want to be caught unprepared should the energy anomaly continue to fluctuate. So I trust we understand our circumstances. We're operating on a strict timetable here, and we're going to be leaving for the negotiations shortly. Commander Westbrook, I want you to leverage our systems to investigate the anomaly from here while we're gone. Aye, Captain. Thank you all. Dismissed. I want to speak to both of you privately. Ambassador Spock, I'd like to make a formal introduction. My first officer, Commander Jara Rydek. Commander, as you are aware, there are limits to what Captain Solano and I can do in our official capacity as representatives of the Federation. But someone in an unofficial capacity, your first officer, for example, would not be bound by those restrictions. Commander Rydek could ingratiate herself to certain parties behind the scenes where they may be more candid in revealing information that could lead to a resolution. She certainly goes her own way. Maybe that helps in this case. It would be unconventional. I'm honored to be included in the negotiation process. You're not just included. You are instrumental. Well, I hope Commander Rydek will have more luck finding out what really happened than we will through official diplomatic channels. The fate of the negotiations, the interests of the Federation, and the prospect for peace will very well depend on it. Mr. Diaz, I understand you have already discussed the warp drive failure with Ambassador Spock? I have. It is imperative that the Ambassador's shuttle be flight ready. I need you both to ascertain the root cause of the system failures he encountered. I'm surprised, Commander. I thought you would have wanted to work on Ambassador Spock's shuttle yourself. I respect the Ambassador and his many accomplishments. But I do not derive any satisfaction from interacting with his shuttle as if it were somehow transubstantiated through its association with him. Especially when I have the entirety of this starship to concern myself with. The Ambassador asked me to take a look, and I'm ready to crack this thing open. Good. 
You could learn from Mr. Diaz's focus. I'll take notes. Then I will leave you to it. Make note of any abnormalities in your report. Carry on. It seems like he's warming up to us. Yeah. Even Chobok has to look at that face and know you've earned some real respect. And I have to admit that I owe you one. You were right to make me go first. I don't know what I was thinking. You've pulled me out of trouble how many times? Call it even. Okay. At the very least, maybe I can track down that bottle of Saurian brandy you're still on the hook for. But first, we have work to do. Ready to go? All set. Let's run the diagnostic. about your talk with Miranda. You, you do? She sent me a priority one dispatch right after your conversation. I'm happy for you. Both of you. <sighs> Thanks. But I'm only going to tell you this once. Don't screw this up. Because I would be very unhappy if you tried this out and then, I don't know, six weeks or six days later, I have to start splitting holidays between the two of you. All because things went south and you're not on speaking terms. That just isn't gonna work for me. That's not gonna happen, okay? And why are you even going there? We haven't even gone on a date yet. I just want you to know where I stand. I like my friends and I like our group. I don't wanna lose that. Is that thing done yet? Yeah, it's wrapping up. Let's see. The relays along the primary EPS are blown. The backup relays are all intact. An EPS overload from the warp drive could cause that. But how did the shuttle end up dead in the water? Huh. Well, maybe the ship's data recorder can tell us something. Here. They were only about eight minutes from their plotted warp point. No faults, just those warnings. What are they? Subspace variants out of tolerance. What does that mean? It means the main navigation array lost sight of space somehow. Will the array going offline cause that? Yes, but it should have also thrown a fault code. Warp field became inverted suddenly. I've seen this happen when the center warp coil cracks. A cracked warp coil throws a fault code. Still, we should take a look. There was a complete warp cascade failure. Wow. They're lucky the shuttle didn't turn inside out. Makes me think the computer panicked on the warp field equation. Any one of these failures should have thrown a fault. If it was caused by a system failure. None of this caused the relays to blow. Roll forward to when that happened. Yes, ma'am. So here, they take a moment to get their bearings and they attempt to re-engage the warp drive. There. That's the relays blowing. And look, there's another warp system alert. They're all the same. Subspace variants out of tolerance, or warp inversions. Finally, there's a complete warp cascade failure. Then it's one of two things. Either a warp coil is cracked, or the navigation array is offline. That makes sense. Divide and conquer. You want to check the warp coils or the navigation array? I'll check the other. Let's not overcomplicate this. Mm. One of these systems is likely broken. I'll check the navigation array.
Jetzt hätte ich wahrscheinlich genauer aufpassen müssen. Aber sonst ist da ja eigentlich nichts. Hat mal kurz mal das Gewippist gesehen. Ich würde gerne rein. Da reich ich weiter. Hier fast. Hat gedrückt lassen. Okay. gesehen. Navigation array checks out, so it must be a coil. Except it's not. Checked and double checked. Well, the readings don't lie. Here comes the security detail for the way team. Okay. Hey. We're escorting the negotiating team to the surface as soon as they come down from the bridge. Oh, let's see. I don't want to interrupt some important work. I was just hoping to see you before I go. The captain and the others will be here any minute now. Should be an interesting ride down to the surface. Come on, I'm never too busy to make time for you. That's not true. <laughs> no, but I am glad you came by. No, that's more accurate. <laughs> I gotta be precise with you, huh? Hey, Maris. Aren't these those button pushers you're always hanging out with? And you're the phaser jockeys we always beat in Parisi squares, right? All aboard for Hotari! That another one of the captain's railroad things? <laughs> gotta be. I just usually zone out by the time he gets to the whole, uh, steam engines where the warp drives of their day part. Catch you all later. You don't want to miss your train. I do have to go. Not gonna lie, I'd rather not leave right now. More important things on my mind. Go on. Do your job. I'll be right here waiting for you when you get back. You better be. Have you seen you? It's Larda Diaz. If you could float back down to reality, we still have a ways to go. All right, where were we? 
So the warp coils in the navigation array are fine, but the nav computer doesn't seem to think so. I'm out of ideas short of field stripping the shuttle from bow to stern. You wanna take this out of the shuttle and throw it on the bench? Oh, real hands on maintenance. I like it. Okay, the nav computer is patched into the ship. The ship's computer can double check our work. If the shuttle's nav computer is putting out false data, we'll know it. Let's run through the shuttle's logs again. Running now. Same. Warp field inversion and the cascade failure. However, the Resolute computer doesn't show the same subspace variance. We're in the same conditions that the shuttle was in when it failed. Why wouldn't the ship's computer get a matching result? What if the subspace variance was a momentary occurrence? That's a possibility, and it would explain why the simulation under our current sensor readings failed to reproduce the issue. But a subspace anomaly strong enough to cause a warp field collapse would leave graviton ripples for days. Let's run with the momentary subspace variance theory for now. Roll forward to the shuttle's attempt to re-engage the warp drive. We need the conditions of space around the shuttle at the moment of warp failure. Resuming simulation. Error in warp field calculation. Cochrane formula variables are out of range. That right there. Take the shuttle sensor data from that moment. Computer, why did the warp field calculation fail? Warp field pressure returned non-orthogonal. Results are undefined. That doesn't help. Wait, what if we use a different ship? Put the Resolute into the simulation instead of the shuttle. Yeah, it should warp just fine. Unless... Computer, run the simulation with the Resolute. Resolute simulated. Computer, give me manual control on the warp power. Static field intensity, warp 1.1. 1.2. 1.3. Warp pressure is destabilizing. Error in warp field calculation. The warp drive has experienced a system-wide cascade failure. Warp field collapsed. Subspace variance is out of tolerance. Cochrane formula results are undefined. Bingo. what -o? The same moment when the shuttle failed to warp, so did the ship. Whatever happened to the shuttle just happened to us. Resolute will not sustain war. We can't leave Hotari space. Jo, das äh, sollte jetzt erstmal wieder gewesen sein. Auf diesen Kapitelsprung habe ich jetzt einfach mal gewartet. Ähm, ja, wenn ihr mögt, ähm, sehen wir uns die Geschichte beim nächsten Mal gemeinsam weiter an. Und dann werden wir uns mal anschauen, was es mit diesen beiden Völkern auf sich hat und wie wir quasi wieder äh, von dort wegkommen. Genau, das... Dann vielleicht beim nächsten Mal, äh, wenn ihr mögt. Und ansonsten würde ich sagen, bis dahin, vielen Dank fürs Zusehen und ciao.